Charles Angel's associate, Anthony Zervas, was killed in 20... Niggas is getting bodied in the airport? Nah. Say whatever you want to say about, about Chicago. Say whatever you want to say about Brooklyn. Say whatever you want to say about America. Niggas say getting bodied in the airport. I'm gonna be honest with you. Lad, that took me out. I ain't gonna... I know y'all probably like, TT, shut up, press play, but I'm still... I, the airport? Could you imagine? La la la. Boarding pass. Bing! And the shout out, shout out, shout out to the lads. Shout out, shout out, shout out to the lads. Yo, lads, no funny. I miss y'all. Like, I really did. Like, the last video I did was like 10 days ago. 10 days ago. Like, yo, is this something on my. I thought it was something on my glasses. That's crazy. That's not screen. My screen be tripping. But anyway, lads, what's up? Hope you feeling good. Hope you feeling great. Listen, take my glasses off. When you look good, you feel good. All right? I see my new dude. Y'all like that? Yeah? It's all right? What you think? Drop a comment. All right, um, let's get to it. Like I said, it's been 10 days. 10 days. I might be rusty. I might not even be funny. I might not even be entertaining. Who knows? Subscribe for the vibe. It's only one way to find out. Now, um, you click the title, you read the page. Shout out to the lads because they sent me this. They sent me this. I just had a tongue twister. They sent me this. And I was like, um, who's Mark Bold, Boldly? Boldly? Budley? I said bold. It's B. But then it's a D. So it's like Budley, right? So I'm like, who that? I'm going to find out. Subscribe for the vibe. Let's get to it. The Common Chiro Motorcycle Club with its distinctive name and notorious reputation, is one of the most well-known outlaw motorcycle clubs in Australia and beyond. Founded in Sydney, Australia in the late 1960s by Jock Ross, who envisioned the it as a group of- it was founded in Australia, lets me further know how crazy y'all lads is. Yo, y'all be fronting like only Americans is crazy. Yeah, right motorcycle enthusiasts however it quickly evolved into an outlaw motorcycle gang who became deeply involved in criminal activities their criminal portfolio includes drug trafficking extortion violence and organized crime the club has been notorious for its role in australia's drug trade especially cocaine and methamphetamine distribution over the last decade the common cheeros have been led by their president mark buddle However, after law enforcement received copies of messages from encrypted messaging app Anom implicating Buddle in the importation of 160 kilos of cocaine, he found himself a fugitive on the run. Just Yo, at this point, he don't never gotta work again. Like, you know, of course, you know, had it not went left, but God, that's a lot of money. I take a break. Hey, just give me a break. What you gonna do with it, TT? You right. <laughs> just quickly, if you're enjoying this video so far, please consider subscribing and liking this video. It really does help me out. This is the- You made me cough with that book. He <coughs> <coughs> <You> made me- <coughs> See? <coughs> made me cough again. He made me cool with that bullshit. Coming out of nowhere, talk about subscribe. Shut up. I'll be saying that. But still, like, it's the middle of the video. You talk about subscribe. Say that in the beginning. The story of Mark Buddle and the Common Chiro Motorcycle Club. The Common Chiro Motorcycle Club was founded in 1966 in the city of Sydney, Australia by Scottish immigrant Jock Ross. Jock ruled the club with a strong hand, introducing military tactics to take them into war against other clubs such as Bandito's MC and the Hells Angels. He also gave members military style titles, his own being Supreme Commander. As the club grew, it developed a reputation for embracing a criminal lifestyle. Members became involved in various illegal activities including drug trafficking, extortion, arms smuggling and organised crime. This shift towards criminality marked a turning point in the club's history and laid the foundations for a turbulent journey. The common heroes have been no- now, I ain't trying to start no war, I would never, right? But quick question. So who got more juice? Hell's Angels? Or them? It's a serious question, you know what I mean? Because it's like part of the history. So like, who's been around longer, you know? Who got more juice? Just curious. 
notorious for their involvement in drug trafficking. Their connections in the criminal underworld have allowed them to play a substantial role in the illegal drug trade. Their activities have made several headlines. In 2021, police raided 26 homes across Queensland and 42 men were arrested, including members of the Comancheros. As a result of these raids, the police seized illegal drugs with an estimated street value of $1 million, which included 113 kilos of cannabis, 134 grams of dope. Grams of cocaine and 84 grams of methamphetamine. In 2022, a former acting national commander of the Comancheros, Siana Facalcilia, was sentenced to over 13 years in prison for leading a conspiracy to import 600 kilos of methamphetamine into New Zealand. However, in this video, we're going to focus on the former president of the Comancheros Motorcycle Club, Mark Buddle. A photo from 1999 shows Buddle long before his days with the Comanchero MC, standing in the back row of his Year 9 class at JJ Carhill Memorial High School in Mascot. Buddle joined the Comanchero MC at the age of 21 and began to rise through the ranks. The Comancheros have a number of rivals, including the Hells Angels. In 2009, Club president at the time, Mick Howie, and 12 Comancheros confronted five Hells Angels at Sydney International Airport. A fight broke out. I hold you. For you to fight at the airport, like, these bikies is different. You know what I mean? Like, I'm not fighting you in the airport. I'm sorry. I'm, I don't care. Call me cat. Oh, you mad cat, TT, or whatever. All right, so what? I like to fly. Once you fight at the airport, that's it. You want to do not follow us. Like, they probably going to label you a damn terrorist. Who knows? I'm not. What? I'm not fighting you. With the, I don't, you could be my worst enemy. My worst of the worst enemy. And I only got. How much worst enemies I got? Could you have multiple worst enemies? Hmm. Anyway, you could be a complete jerk that I just don't like. I'm not fighting you in the airport. Now, considering the fact that you're in the airport and I'm in the airport, me in the same city, we can go somewhere and link up and do our ones and twos if it's really that serious. But come on now, grow up. <laughs> you know what I mean? But other than that, I'm not fighting you in the airport. These bikies is different. And Hell's Angels associate Anthony Zervas was killed in 2011. In the airport? Nah. Hold on. No way. No way niggas is getting bodied in the airport. You're not telling me that. You're not telling me niggas is getting killed in the airport in Australia. You're not telling me that. I gotta bring that back. You're not telling me that. Number of rivals, including the Hells Angels. In 2009, club president at the time, Mick Howie, and 12 Comancheros confronted five Hells Angels at Sydney International Airport. A fight broke out, and Hells Angels associate Anthony Zervas was killed. In 20 Niggas is getting bodied in the airport? Nah, say whatever you want to say about, about Chicago, say whatever you want to say about Brooklyn, say whatever you want to say about America. You can say getting bodied in the airport, I'm be honest with you, I'm be honest with you, I mean 100%, you can look it up, if you can show me a news article of somebody getting their head knocked off their shoulders in America, in the airport, I, I'll probably send you $20, $20, $20, I don't know, $20. Because I, I, just, I don't believe that. I, what, the airport? Nah, lads. Lads, that took me out. I ain't gonna. I know y'all probably like, TT, shut up, press play. But I'm still. I, what, the airport? Could you imagine? La, la, la. Boarding pass. Bing! In the airport. Like, you would just drop to get your boarding pass. Nah, that's insane. 2011, Mick Howie was found guilty of murder. With Howie behind bars, this left the presidency open for grabs. This position went temporarily to Hohepa Nakuru until he left Australia. See how much like what? In 2010, <laughs> this is when Mark Buddle stepped up as the new president of the Comanchero Motorcycle Club. With Buddle leading the Comanchero MC, they continued to grow their criminal empire. However, in 2016, 
Buddle fled to Dubai after becoming a person of interest in the robbery turned murder of security guard Gary Alibon in Sydney in 2010. On the day he was killed, Alibon had been dropping off cash at a Commonwealth Bank ATM when just after 6am a trio of armed men wearing balaclavas ambushed him and his crew of three. The bandits snatched a cash box containing $300,000 and should have immediately made their getaway in a stolen silver Audi S8 driven by a f All I'm saying is if you want to commit a robbery, why, why get a foreign? Like stolen foreign, that's like mad noticeable fourth accomplice. Instead, one of the gunmen shot Alibon in the back while the guard had his hands raised, then stole his work Wait, issued firearm. On, my bad. My in texting me. She having, she having a bad day, so I gotta make sure my baby good. Yeah, no. The bandit snatched a cash box containing $300,000 and should have immediately made their getaway in a stolen silver Audi S8 driven by a fourth accomplice. Instead, one of the gunmen shot Alibon in the back while the guard had his hands raised, Yo, then stole his- shit. <coughs> got me coughing. This some movie shit. Work issued firearm in one last indignity. In Dubai, Buddle attempts to set up a new life with his partner Melanie Tewisha and two children. While overseas, Buddle seemingly stayed in control of the Comanchero MC and in 2017 declared himself Commander of the World after texting an associate, I'm the Commander of the World, no one is to touch another member or set up another chapter without my permission. In 2018, Buddle leaves Dubai for the first time to travel to Greece. During this time, Sydney underworld figure John Macris is murdered outside his home in Athens, shortly after Buddle returns to Dubai. Despite seeming suspicious, two Bulgarian brothers were arrested and charged with the murder of John Macris. After returning to Dubai, Buddle continued to live a life of luxury. However, several years later in 2021, he said after returning to Dubai, he, did, he continued to live a life of luxury. So, yo, my poor Spidey, after he just did what he did, he just went back chilling, living la vida loca. Screaming! On, Buddle finds himself in trouble after a video surfaced showing him fighting tourists at a resort pool. This leads to Buddle fleeing Dubai and splitting with his partner, Melanie Tawisha. Buddle hops between numerous countries, including Iraq, Lebanon and Turkey before settling in Cyprus. A Cyprus news outlet claimed Buddle organised to live in northern Cyprus after meeting with high-ranking politicians who granted him residency until August 6, 2022. While in northern Cyprus, it's believed Buddle was still heavily involved in the underworld, as well as investing in local businesses and real estate, and even marrying a mystery woman by the name of Uzge. However, while Buddle was enjoying his life of luxury in Europe, and continuing to grow his criminal empire, he had made one huge mistake. Buddle and his criminal associates were using the encrypted phones known as Anom to conduct their criminal activities. Little did they know, Anom had been conceived, built, marketed and sold by the police who were monitoring every text exchange. You cannot outsmart the police. Like. I understand. You think you can. There's criminals out there that think they can. But why do we know about those criminals? Because they did not outsmart the police. You cannot outsmart the police. Number one, they have resources that you don't have. And you know the number one reason why you can't outsmart the police? Because they actually are professionals. You see, you can't be a professional criminal because it's not something that's done right. <laughs> It's a crime. It's wrong. Everything about it is wrong. You can't be great at it because you're wrong. How are you going to be great at doing wrong? Exactly. Now, police professionals, they went to school for it. Then you got the detectives. They went to school for it. They trained. They've been in the field. And not to mention, there's way more criminal. I mean, there's way more police than there are criminals. You only hear about one kingpin every so often. You always hear about the detectives. You always hear about the lawyers. So I say this to say, don't do crime because you cannot outsmart the police. This is a perfect example. 
They thought they outsmarted the police. Police was like, nah, boy. We been using the same system y'all using. What's up? The people selling the phone claimed that Anom was the most secure messaging service in the world. Not only was every message encrypted so that it could not be read by a digital eavesdropper, it could only be received by another Anom phone user. Moreover, Anom could not be downloaded from any of the usual app stores. Anom seemed the ideal channel for Buddle to arrange the importation of $40 million worth of cocaine into Australia. It was not, however, a secure phone app at all. Every message sent on the app since its launch in 2018, 19.37 million of them had been collected and many of them read by the Australian Federal Police, who, with the... That's the kicker right there. Because the boy was selling $40 million worth of bricks. You know what I mean? Well, you know, like, because you got this YouTube, so you got to, you know what I mean? Y'all know what I'm saying, you feel me? And on top of that, he thinking that he could just do it on the phone the whole time. Police got it. Same thing with Facebook. Same thing with Telegram. All those ads. Niggas think niggas don't know what's going on. Yo, that's stupid. They know what's going on. The FBI had conceived, built, and sold the devices. With this evidence piling up, law enforcement moved swiftly. In July 2022, Buddle was captured at gunpoint, returning to his hideout in Cyprus by officers identifying themselves as FBI. Buddle was later extradited to Turkey where he was held by Turkish authorities. Eventually, Buddle was deported from Turkey and Australia's most wanted man was apprehended by Australian Federal Police in Darwin. He was then dragged onto a private jet and extradited from Darwin to Melbourne. Buddle is currently on remand in a Victorian jail where he faces drug charges and allegations yeah, of trying to- Damn, you're innocent and to prove him guilty. As you can see, he hasn't been tried yet. So, you're innocent and to prove him guilty. Free that. Free that. Import. $40 million worth of cocaine into Australia. I can only imagine the arrest of Mark I Buddle. $40 million is a lot of dollars. I'm just saying. Like, that. they, they, they you feel me? You know what you can do with $40 million? $40 million, lads, y'all would never see me on YouTube again. I'm be honest with you. <laughs> Bye! Like, $40 million? $40 million? What I got? What I'm gonna do on YouTube? What? What I'm gonna do? Shit on y'all? Like, I'm not gonna do that. Hey, guys, look at my $40 million every day. I'm like, come on, I ain't gonna throw that in y'all face. Hell no. But then again, $40 million is kind of reasonable. Like, I could see myself touching $40 million. Right? I mean, how much does Mr. Beast make? Drop a comment, let me know. <clears throat> has caused a power vacuum within the common chair and subscribe for the vibe and free that guy. Wait, let me see how this ends. MC and other criminals are waiting or have already stepped in to take his place. But I let me know what you think below in the comments.